So just from this view again, uh, which we touched on a moment ago, um, we're now going to um, look to that roundel where the tank is bottom right of your screen. And we're going to pick up the story of musical box. At this point, the tanks are actually starting to, certainly the Whippet tanks are starting to outstrip the, um, the infantry. And they're actually working in conjunction with the cavalry and we'll discuss the effectiveness of that and you probably draw your con own conclusions perhaps um, of, of that but certainly we've, we've got literally we've got armoured cars we've got cavalry we've got light tanks all operating out in front now um, they've, they've pushed ahead of the infantry and what they're doing is causing you know death and despair and, and disorganisation to the retreat in Germans you know we've definitely broken through here and, um, and the tanks and cavalry are coming across Germans that really are not expecting them so we've got an account now that of, of an action that takes place uh, just to the bottom of your picture there by the railway and let's listen to um, the account by Lieutenant Arnold of what takes place down there. I then followed the railway further east and came upon two cavalry patrols of 12 men each who were being fired at by a party of the enemy hiding in standing corn. I dealt with them. There is I know a deadly brevity about those four words. Going further east, I came across a second patrol, pursuing the enemy. The leading horse was so tired that he could not gain on the Hun, and with his sword stretched out at the back of the fleeing Hun, the German suddenly turned and shot down the rider. The cavalry patrol dismounted when they came under heavy fire from the enemy, who had now taken up a position on the railway bridge, and were firing over the parapet, inflicting one or two casualties. I ran the machine up until we had a clear view of the bridge, and killed four of the enemy with one long burst. The other two tumbled off the other end and on down the opposite slope out of sight in the direction of Berlin. Looking down the railway tracks, I saw a smouldering train being pulled away. As we moved on, I came upon the small valley by Harbonnier and saw it full of hutments with Germans packing away their kit. As soon as we opened fire, many more emerged and made off. We accounted for about 60 of these. We cruised up and down for nearly an hour and were pretty much on our own. The only thing to do was keep on moving like the stormy petrol in a typhoon.